The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Up next on The Believer's Walk of Faith. Every belief system, believing that you got to wait, believing things can't be done for you because your background is not such and such, believing that you can't come up with solutions because you haven't been to the engineering program, believing every tree in you that the Father didn't plant, Jesus said, I promise you, I'm going to dig it out. I'm going to get it, root it. All of the guilt and shame you have about your past, I'm going to root that tree out. Your born again spirit is able to produce immediately. I want to be able to produce right now. What do I need? I need wisdom. I need the answer. I need healing. I need deliverance. And I can get it right now. Say amen to that. Now, I know this is getting a little technical for some of y'all. Well, I thought I was going to hear about, you know, he went up on the mountain and so forth. You're hearing about it right now. See, if I don't give you this, you can never move up into a place where you can stop the devil's takeover. We, we got to stop the devil from taking your kids. There is an answer to stop the carjacking in Chicago. And watch this, that, that, that God is depending on you because he put you in this earth and sent you to Chicago and wants you to take this word and that I'm preaching and apply it to whatever situation in your life and get results. It's time for the church to take the lead. You don't count on the world to deliver you. The world can't deliver you. The world can't deliver themselves. Well, they got some money. Well, you better go get it because it doesn't even belong to them. Now, don't start me on that. When Jesus stripped Satan, he stripped them. They just holding it for you. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Say amen. It's, it, it's really good reason for you to never be broke another day in your life. Money cometh into you now. See, I'm, I'm giving you this because I want you to do something that other folk can't do. I, I want you to be able to transfer money out of this account into your account. Somebody pulling over here, baby, y'all. Take a seat. you to envision angels with bags of money. Watch this. Flying to your house. One of them talking to the other one and said, what's, what's the address again? They still fly. What's the address? 79th Street. 79th and what? 79th and Cottage. Here it is. <laughs> for you doing it in 3D. Those days are over. You're going to do things on another level. Say amen. amen. Now, this is going beyond your natural mind. Your natural mind ain't heard nothing like this. You're going to come up with things that's going to move stuff around in this earth. Look at Jesus. Does your master pay taxes? Yeah, we pay taxes, Peter. Listen, what I want you to do is go fishing. The first fish you pull up, look at his mouth, and you'll see 20 grand. Get that out and pay the taxes. Come on now. You might not go fishing, but you might go to a fashion show. And you know, wherever you go, God 
can get ready for foolish thoughts. Say amen to that. All right. No more learning. Look what it says over in John chapter 7 and verse 14 and 15. Ready? Read. he know so much. He never went to MIT. Come on. He he never went to this big school. How does he know so much? So I'm saying to you, you're going to have a whole different level of learning. I'm not saying don't go to school, but he said over in Daniel chapter one, he said that you know more than all your teachers. God is, is expecting the church to be at a level where the church can answer the problems of the world. Let's move to the next section. It's called planting the heavens. All right. Now, you know where that's found in Isaiah chapter. You've gone over this before. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 16. I've put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and and lay the foundation of the earth and say to Zion, thou art my people. Okay. Planting the heavens. All right. Here's the first thing I think about in planting the heavens. Look at Philippians chapters three and verse 20. All right. I'd like you to read that with me. Ready? Read. Stop. Where is your homeland? In heaven. Got it? But God's going to plant you on the earth. Watch this. Not just anywhere on the earth. God has planted you in Chicago. And he purposely plants the righteous among the wicked. Can we, can we keep going here? He purposely, well, those people at that job use too much bad language. He purposely plants the righteous among the wicked on purpose. Well, I'm going to quit that thing. I'm going to just go work for the church. No, you are the church. You don't need to go anywhere. God has planted you right there and given you what it takes to transform it. Do you hear? Every place he puts you, the sole of your foot to tread upon, he's given it to you. He's given it to you to manage it, to transform it, to clean it out. So I'm saying to you right now that you've got things inside of you that perhaps you don't even, not even aware of, that there's power in you. He said, you shall receive what? How? That's miracle working ability that wherever you go, miracles can take place. All right, you with me? So you've been planted there for a purpose and for a reason. Now look at this scripture, John chapter 17, Verses 14 and 15. I've got it all laid out for you. I've got it all laid. See, the one thing you can't do with me is you can't argue with me because I'm going to show you the scripture. So if you got any argument, tell Jesus you want to see it. But don't argue with me. I'm the messenger. Look what it says. Ready? Read. Stop right there. We're going to read the next one, but stop right there. Oh, they don't seem to like me down there. Well, come to read the verse again because you got a lot of Jesus in you and the devil's trying to make them make you feel bad because of the Christ that's in you. But what you need to do is shake it off. 
and understand that God's got you in a place they can't stop you. They, because they don't promote you. He said your promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west. Your promotion comes from the Lord, so you don't have to kiss up to the supervisor, hoping that the supervisor likes you. You can just keep walking, keep talking, keep decreeing, keep... You're going to speak the invisible and decree the impossible. I'll try it again. You're going to speak the invisible and decree the impossible. Are you with me here? You're going to get right in the middle of that place and start decreeing the word of God. Watch this. And everything must change. If you don't change, everything around you've got to change. Satan's job is to get you to step out of faith and get mad at somebody when God's telling you stand in faith and stay in love. And if you keep decreeing it, everything around you... Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. All right, now, that second part of John, John chapter uh, 17, verse 15, I want you to read that one too. Ready? Read. All right, he's saying, wait a minute, Father, don't take them out of the world, but leave them in the world. Now, why? Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14. Why leave you in the world? Watch this right here. Ready? Read. Stop. You are the what? Where does the light shine brightest? In darkness. The darker it is, the brighter the light. I said the darker it is, the brighter the light. God puts you here to convert the world. And you're going to do it because they're going to watch you and they're going to see how your God is blessing you, how your God is promoting you, how your God is keeping you, how your God is giving you wisdom. And they're going to sometime want to know whose God you serve. And you sit down and say, his name is Jesus. Would you sit down for a minute and let me tell you about him. And once he tells you about, you tell them about him, they're going to want to know, know your God. Say amen to them. Now, the Bible says, no weapon that is what? Formed against you shall prosper, and every, come on, tongue that shall rise against you in judgment shall be condemned. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and my righteousness is of you, saith the Lord. Now, God is waiting on you because you got to be the one that's going to change the system from what it is to what God's plan for it to be. All right, let's look at Daniel's life real quick. We'll look at Daniel, then look at Martin Luther King, and then we out. Praise God. All right, look at Daniel first. Daniel chapter 3, verse 17. Here is Daniel. He and his uh, three Hebrew brothers, uh, guys came, and now they're taken into Babylon, and Babylon is trying to give them some of those uh, brains and eggs. And so what they're saying is, wait a minute, we don't eat any pork here. Uh, so that, now nah, I got, if you eat brains and eggs, you pray on it and it don't bother you, then go and eat it. Uh, but pig feet, brains and eggs, all of that slave food, I don't eat anymore. Now, now don't get mad at me. Look here. Don't get mad at me. This is my choice. You eat what you want to eat. I know them pork chops. You got some right now in the freezer. Ready, ready to bite down on them. I know that. I got some hog head cheese out there too. I used to eat all that and I got saved. Now, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. Come on, come on. See, somebody gonna get mad. Well, I ain't coming here no more. With your pig eating self, you need to come here 
<laughs> so, I can, so I can get this word in your mind. All right, now, watch this. <laughs> watch this side here, this dangerous side. Let me come back over here, man. They eat chimneys over there. Woo, they eat chimneys over there, okay. <laughs> them, they don't call them chimneys, they call them wrinkles. <laughs> All right, I used, to, I used to eat some wrinkles, though. All right, and I'm still here. All right, now let's see, where was I? All right, okay, so Daniel, now look what happened, Daniel chapter three, verse 17. They tried to make Daniel See, eat their food. They tried to make him bow down. They tried to make him serve a false god. But Daniel said, no, we're not going to do that. And what is he doing? He said, I'm resisting that. He said, the God that I serve, he's going to deliver me. Now, even though you're threatening me, that your threats are not going to work because I'm not going to bow down. And what did King do? He said, turn the fire up, what? seven times hotter. I'm talking about at the job. It gets hot at the job. But that's because you're about to break through something. That enemy is trying to get you to leave Jesus. Come on now and rely on your own ability. No, no. You keep Jesus and his name being in your heart and in your mind. Next thing you know, next thing you know, he threw him in the fire. Did they burn? No. no. And then next thing you know, come on up, verse 29. I want you to look at that because this is the end game. The end game is that you're going to be able to change leaders and change laws. Look what it says. Ready? Read, please. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that powerful? I'm telling you, God's put you in that place and they can't get you out. What they're going to have to do is bow to your God because your God is greater than all gods. Say amen. How about Dr. Martin Luther King? Notice he came in there. Next thing you know, there are people uh, that have segregation uh, in their minds and they're standing in the uh, door of the school and, 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 and nobody could come in, University of Alabama, wherever it was, and no blacks could come in and go to school. King says, I'm going to change that. I'm going to change that. All his meetings he had, he did not have it in a secular place. The only time he went secular is when he went to Washington and had the big meeting. He always had them in churches because it's scripture he was standing on. And Amos chapter 5, verse 24 is where he stood. Ready? Read. He wasn't letting up till justice rolled down like water. And I'm telling you, what did he do? They put him in jail, but couldn't touch him. They did this, couldn't touch him. Now you got to understand that Dr. Martin Luther King, thank God for him. He got assassinated. They did say, I may not get that with you. I'm not telling you, I may not get that with you. I'm telling you, I'm taking you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. shout because we're coming out. Thank you, Jesus. Take your seats. So you're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Miracles win. You don't wait. Don't let the devil talk you into waiting. I said you don't wait. You don't even have to wait for a raise. Give yourself a raise. You don't have to wait on Ed McMahon. Call it in now. You don't have to wait on the dentist appointment. Get some new teeth. You don't have to. Are you following what I'm saying here? Let's get this in our spirit. Why? 
new trees. Say new trees. New trees. He said to, to us in Matthew chapter 15, he said this, every tree in you that the father didn't plant shall be rooted up. That means every belief system, believing that you got to wait, yeah. believing things can't be done for you because your background is not such and such, yeah. believing that you can't come up with solutions because you haven't been to the engineering program, believing every tree in you that the father didn't plant, Jesus said, I promise you, yes, I'm going to dig it out. Yes, I'm going to get it rooted. All of the guilt and shame you have about your past, I'm going to root that tree out. You're in the right place. He sent you here because he's going to use you to change everything. He's going to turn gang lords into preachers. He's going to turn jails, come on, into boarding schools. I'm just telling you right now that you, the church is about to experience its finest hour. Jesus said, my hour has not yet come, but your hour is here. No more delays. That transfer of wealth must come over now. Why? There's babies crying because they don't have enough food. There's young people, young 16 year old going to jail because they had no training. The time is now, saints. You don't have to wait. So God, use me now. Well, praise the Lord. Now, this is Offering Day on the broadcast, and what we do is give our partners and those who are being uh, blessed by our program just an off opportunity to sow a seed. Now, I'd like you to give you a word for your increase, because God is a God of increase. This word comes from the Bible. It's talking about when Adam sinned in the garden, of what he lost. He lost his relationship with God. He lost his assignment, but one of the biggest things he lost, he lost his ability for God to provide for him. And that's what born again gets back for you. But a lot of people get born again, but they never get back to that place where God can provide for them. They're trying to work two jobs or long double shifts and so forth and so on. There's nothing wrong with that, but if you're doing working for a living, God has a better way for you to live. And that's basically what God has provided through Jesus Christ. It's the good news. It's that God wants us to rest in his provision. That's a powerful concept. He wants us to rest in his provision. A story when Peter was fishing, he has fished all night, caught nothing. Well, here comes Jesus. Jesus is preaching on the shoreline. He asked Peter, I'd like to use your boat. Peter gave him permission. He got in there and he told Peter, push out a little from the land. He did. And Jesus sat down and taught the people. Once he finished speaking, he turned to Peter and said, now launch out into the deep, let down your nets for a draught. Draught means a great increase. God wants you to increase. And so Peter said, well, I've toiled all night and taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I'll let down the net. And when he did it, he enclosed so many fish till the net popped. And now he called for his partners. They came and filled up their boats and both boats begin to sink. That's how much God wants to give us, an overflowing amount. And then Peter ended up throwing himself at Jesus' knees saying, away from me, I'm a sinful man, O Lord. Why? Because he's astonished and all that were with him at the draught of fishes they had taken. What did it do? It brought him to his knees because he saw that God would provide for him. A lot of people don't know God will provide for them. They've never found that out. God has a way of meeting your needs. It's through your seed. Peter's seed was his boat. You have to sow something. Sometimes, well, God bless those who gave and bless those who wanted to give but didn't give. That sounds good. 
But for you to get God's blessing and increase, you've got to sow a seed. He made it that way himself. The Bible says when God had lost his son or lost the earth and lost Adam and Eve and so forth, he sowed. God so loved the world that he gave. Sowed his son. And when his son came up, we came up. Isn't that something? So there might be some things you've lost that you want to recover. Sow a seed. So here's the broadcast. This is good soil. As you sow your seed, let's pray this prayer right now in advance because we know that you're going to get a good big increase of harvest. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for those who are not only faithful in terms of supporting our ministry, but those, Lord, who are getting blessed by our ministry. We thank you for them all. Lord, as they sow their seed into this ministry, we pray that you'll measure it back to them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. You'll meet their needs into their bosom. We thank you for it. And Lord, we thank you for increase in every area of our lives. We bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, it's done. Praise God. As you've sown that seed and whatever you have in mind, let it go, sow it good ground, it'll be measured back to you, as the Bible says, 30, 60, and some 100-fold. Well, this is Bill Winston saying thank you so much for supporting us. We love you. And until next time, keep walking by faith. Today's message, Miracles Now, is filled with life-changing truths that can turn your circumstances around and bring you into the best life God has for you. However, You've only heard a portion of the message. To receive today's teaching in its entirety on MP3 or CD, on MP4 or DVD, order by calling 1-800-711-9327 or go online at BillWinston.org. You don't have to wait for your miracle. You can receive your miracle now. Order this dynamic teaching. Pastor Winston, I watch your live services as often as I can, and at night, I listen again to the powerful Word of God that you preach. You speak of owning our homes debt-free and owning businesses. I want to tell you that those seeds were planted into my heart, and the Lord blessed me to purchase my home in Atlanta, paid in full and a vehicle. Praise God. I thank you for helping me to stretch my faith and to believe that God can do more than I can ask or imagine. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. Now remember, you need faith to get to your destiny. So don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our videos. This is Bill Winston. I love you and keep walking by faith.